Okay, and since we have 10 minutes left, uh, I want to show you the biggest beatdown of the day. And it, it wasn't Karen beating me down, although I, I do like that. Uh, it was in the gameplay today between Fabiana Caruana with the black pieces uh, versus um, uh, Jan Nepomnishi. Jan has changed the pronunciation of his last name to Jan Nepo Biatch, because that's how he got beat today. Yeah, so they transpose into a regular uh, dragon variation eventually. Yeah, and when I'm black here, I play uh, bishop d7, knight takes d4, b5. And he played queen a5, which I don't know. And white played slightly strange, but not terrible, queen d3, which allows knight e5 with tempo, but it's okay. Um, so it's like a regular dragon, except black's a tempo ahead, because white's played queen d3, queen d2. And blacks play queen a5, which doesn't have the greatest reputation. But it looks like a dragon. Okay, so just very typical. White is slightly better. Knight b3, reasonable. The engine uh, actually prefers uh, knight c to e2. Well, that's the wrong board. Knight c to e2 and says white is slightly better. But knight b3 looks looks more natural to me. Uh, queen a6, bishop d4 is good, rook c8. And in this position, uh, white made the losing move. The engine says queen g5 is all zeros. And queen e2 is very slightly better for black. But if you're a dragon player from either color and you have dragons a lot, you got to like Black's position. Black has all his pieces on the attack. White hasn't played h4, h5 yet. Black has the two bishops. Black can play b5, b4. I mean, Engine says it's equal, but... I mean, this is a dragon lover's dream. And here, White made the losing move. Uh, Black has a threat, which White didn't see. And White exacerbated the threat by playing g5, which just loses the game to knight takes e4, which for somebody like Jan Nipomnishi, this should be this should be very easy. And the idea is, uh, if you take with the knight, which he didn't do, you, uh, you play rook takes d4, and knight takes d4 runs into checkmate. And otherwise... Black is a pawn up with two bishops. I mean, and black has all the attack. Uh, rook a force coming, and all, all these pawns can get attacked by the bishops and rooks and queen. White has no attack. So that loses very simply. So he took with a pawn, bishop takes, knight takes, and rook c3 with the same, it's the same deviled egg. It's, it's the same tactic. And uh, if you take the rook, for example, this is just checkmate. And uh, if you take the bishop, which is what I would do if I was playing, then rook takes c2 um, is completely winning. And white has two ideas here. White can take the rook and <clears throat> go into this lost position because... This is hanging, this is hanging, this is hanging in its check. So there's there's not much for white to do. Could save the A pawn. And this is this is completely winning for black. Black has two pass pawns in the center, and black has a queen and three pawns for two rooks. I would do this if I was white, because you know, alternative is the worst. Uh, Jan didn't do that. He played A3. Um and also in this position, instead of taking this and losing, he could play queen d5. Now f takes e6 actually doesn't win, but queen b6 wins, threatening queen b2 mate. 
And if you trade queens, then this double rook ending is black is two pawns up. White's pawn structure is ridiculous. Um, and if you play b3, uh, we can play queen a6, queen f2, threatening mate. Uh, a force forced, queen e2, threatening mate. The best white can do is queen d4, stopping rook b2, then take. And black is uh, two pawns up and has total domination of the position, plus five for black. So instead he played a3, queen c4 is the best move, threatening checkmate again. And if you take the bishop, then I take on c2. And this is probably the best white can do. And then white can go into this uh, completely lost end game. Uh, rook here, and these pawns are weak. Black's up a pawn. Black has the C file. And this is this is the best that white can do. Uh, Jan didn't defend well. He played B3, Queen C5, and now black is up a pawn with a mating attack. White has no attack. Um, rook c1, queen takes, black's up two pawns, h4, here comes the brilliant white attack, rook c5, rook f1, and in this position, uh, black played a move I would never consider, and white resigned. Uh, equally brilliant move to what black did is rook c2, and this is also winning. But what Fabi did was better. Uh, Bishop takes b3, and you can see Jan didn't use much time this game. I think after knight takes e4, he just gave up and was playing quickly. Uh, in this position, uh, white resigned. Obviously, black's threatening mate. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you take on b3. I'm taking with the rook. So we get the same position. So This position is going to occur... Whether you take with the pawn or the knight, you just take with one, then the other, and we get this position. And if you play the move king a1, then rook c4, followed by rook a4, is curtains. And I'm sure rook c2 is, is the same thing. Uh, and if you play queen b2, I check. The king has to go to the a file, and then rook a5 check leads to mate. Uh, so after bishop takes b3... There's, there's nothing more for White to do, and Jan resigned. So a brilliant game, nice easy win for Fabi with Black, and now Fabi once again is fighting for first place um, with Faruja. Uh, let me see what the standings are. Faruja has four out of uh, six, and Wesley So, Fabi have three and a half, MVL, Gukesh, Ding, and Pragdananda have three, and Norderbeck, Jan, and Geary have, I'm uh, oh, sorry, Norderbeck and Jan have two and a half. Geary's in 10th place with three. I thought, I thought Geary was going to win. Geary was winning, and then, and then he didn't win. Uh, what? I, I thought, I thought Geary was going to win this game. Geary was definitely winning. Uh, let's see. The last position I saw was knight f3, and white white is completely winning. G5 doesn't make a lot of sense when you could play knight takes e5. I've noticed Geary isn't very incisive lately. He plays a lot of boring moves when there's winning moves. Knight takes e5 is just obvious. And c3 is a mistake. Now white is plus four, it says. Rook a5 just doesn't make any sense. Why would you play rook a5? I mean, if you want to win the pawn, you could play rook a3. Rook a5 is winning. Just I don't understand the move. Knight f3 pinning your own knight is ridiculous. Every king move is better, but king f4 is the most winning. Yeah, now, now white's probably not even winning anymore. G4 is threatened. King F2 is forced. 
and knight d4 gives away the win. Uh, knight e1, still good winning chances for white, it says. Now, now there's no winning chances for white. Knight g6 is a mistake. We can just take on, take the pawn on d3. Knight's terrible on c2. Rook f3 check was better. Yeah, it's just a comedy of errors. When, when I was younger, people could play chess well. Truth hurts. People just aren't as strong as they used to be. Chess players got weaker. And then they repeated. Ah, it's just a terrible game. But but uh, Geary should definitely won. Geary's having a tough year. Geary can't do anything right in 2024. Maybe 2025 will play better. Seems like he's lost his confidence. Anyway, uh, if you're watching Anish, you should submit some games for our Sunday. You can sub to the channel, submit on Discord, and I can make fun of you as much as I make fun of everybody else, and deservedly so. This looks like my favorite game from this event, deservedly versus so. So just terrible, and I, I hope you're ashamed. Yeah, very bad play. Basically, if you're as weak as these players, don't analyze your game with an engine because you'll see how bad you are. All right, let's see. I can. Who am I going to raid? I raided Nemsko yesterday.